Hey guys, today it is the 24th still, and I'm going to be doing the Bible study video for this weekend. I've decided to do it either Saturday or Sunday every week, just so I have a little bit more time to do certain things, in case I might need to write certain things out or do certain things that I want to do with this. So, um, this story that we're going to be doing today is very interesting because it is something that is, that it, it's quite amazing how God preserved the lineage of David through one woman who hid one little infant child who was, you know, the last living descendant of David at the time. And if you remember correctly, the prophecies that came along with Jesus' birth said that he would be a descendant of David. And he was a descendant of David on the on Mary's side. And even more amazingly, is that even though Joseph did not give his DNA to Jesus because he was virgin born, he still was also um on the lineage of David as well. So it's quite remarkable how this plays into the entire coming of Jesus. So we're going to read from 2 Kings chapter 11. And this is going to explain how the line of David was preserved for the coming of Jesus. And the first section is Queen Athaliah rules in Judah. It says, When Athaliah, the mother of King Ahaz Ahaziah of Judah, learned that her son was dead, she began to destroy the rest of the royal family. But Ahaziah's sister Jehosheba, the daughter of King Jehoram, took Ahaziah's infant son Joash and stole him away from among the rest of the king's children who were about to be killed. She put Joash and his nurse in a bedroom to hide him from Athaliah so the child was not murdered. Joash remained hidden in the temple of the Lord for six years while Athaliah ruled over the land. Then the next section of well, chapter 4, I mean, um, verse 4, the revolt against Athaliah. In the seventh year of Athaliah's reign, Jehoiada, the priest, summoned the commanders, the Karite mercenaries, or mercenaries, and palace guards to come to the temple of the Lord. He made a solemn pact with them and made them swear an oath of loyalty there in the Lord's temple. And then he showed him the king's son. Jehoiada told them, This is what you must do. A third of you who are on duty in the Sabbath are to guard the royal place itself. Another third of you are to stand guard at the surrogate. Or surrogate, it sounded like I said some other word. <laughs> and the final third must stand guard behind the palace guard. These three groups will guard the palace. The other two units who are off duty on the Sabbath must stand guard for the king at the Lord's temple. Form a bodyguard around the king and keep your weapons in hand. Kill anyone who tries to break through. Stay with the king wherever he goes. So the commander did everything as, Je as Jehoiada the priest ordered. The commander took charge of the men reporting for duty at that Sabbath, as well as those who were going off duty. And they brought them all to Jehoiada the priest, and he supplied them with the spears and small shield that had once belonged to King David, and it was stored in the temple of the Lord. The palace guards stationed themselves around the king with their weapons ready. They formed a line from the south side of the temple around to the north side and all around the altar. Then Jehoiada brought out Joash, the king's son, placed the crown on his head, and they presented him with a copy of God's laws. They anointed him and proclaimed him king, and everyone clapped their hands and shouted, Long live the king! This next section, the death of Athaliah, starting with verse 13. When Athaliah heard all the noise made by the palace guards and the people, she hurried to the Lord's temple to see what was happening. When she arrived, she saw the newly crowned king standing in his place of authority by the pillar, as was the custom at times of coronation. The commanders and trumpeters were surrounding him, and people from all over the land were rejoicing and blowing trumpets. When Azaliah saw this, she tore her clothes in despair and shouted, Treason! Treason! Then Jehoiada the priest ordered the commands 
I mean the commanders, who were in charge of the troops, take her to the soldiers in front of the temple and kill anyone who tries to rescue her. So the priest had said, she must not be killed in the temple of the Lord. So they seized her and led her out to the gate where the horses entered the palace guard, the palace grounds, and she was killed there. All right. Then the next section and the last section. Jehovah's religious reform, starting on verse 17. Then Jehovah made a covenant between the Lord and the king that the people and the people that they would be the Lord's people. He also made a covenant between the king and the people, and all the people of the land went over to the temple of Baal and tore it down. They demolished the altars and smashed the idols to pieces, and they killed Mahan the priest of Baal in front of the altars. Jehovah the priest stationed guards at the temple of the Lord. Then the commanders, the Karite mercenaries, and the palace guards, all from and all the people of the land escorted the king from the temple of the Lord. They went through the gate of the guards and into the palace, and the king took his seat on the royal throne. So all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was peaceful because Athaliah had been killed at the king's palace. And Joash was seven years old when he became king. All right, so that is a pretty powerful story because when you think about it, um, God had everything planned out from the beginning as to how he was going to save the universe. And if God is all-knowing and all-seeing and all-powerful, I'm pretty sure that once man decided to sin and even before Adam and Eve sinned he probably was already working on the plan of getting Jesus to the earth to save us so um, another great lesson that comes from this is that Jehoshaphat pretty much preserved the lineage of David he she made sure that after because Athaliah was crazy and she was going on a huge killing spree because she was, she did not want anybody to come between her and you know, they all worship which she um, helped establish in the kingdom of Judah at the time. So she was very um, much crazy in the fact that she was going on killing rampage and basically trying to kill everybody in the entire area that was trying to stop her. So. God knew that he, he had already prophesied that the lineage of David would be the lineage by which Jesus would come to the earth. So he knew he had to do something about um, this little boy, Joash, who later became the king at seven years old. Um, so he decided to use Jehoshaphat, which um, what. It's, it's a remarkable thing to me because a lot of people talk about how they're too small or they're not significant enough and not a lot of people know who they are or they're not a celebrity or they're not um, famous enough to be used by God. But God can use anybody because he just used a very simple, loving person who saved this woman, I mean saved this little boy, um, so that Jesus could basically be, um, the prophecy of Jesus could be fulfilled because Jesus came through the line of David. So I want, so basically the entire salvation of the world for eternity rested in this woman and she obeyed God or this, she, I don't know if God had literally commanded her or not. I forgot. It doesn't say whether God commanded her or not, but she went along with God's plan so I'm thinking she was a very godly woman and her husband was Jehoshaphat who was priest so no she was Jehoshaphat and her husband was Jehoiada or something like that whatever her his name is so um, I'm pretty sure they were very godly people because they were priests and they were trying to make sure that Baal worship didn't come into the land of Judah so they're very godly people, and God used her and allowed the, the lineage of David to continue basically making way for the salvation of the world through Jesus Christ. 
because remember Jesus is all human and all God at the same time. So Jesus is still hu was still human because he was born from the Virgin Mary. So therefore, there would have to be a lineage associated with him, and that was the lineage of David. So my message for you today, and the message that God is trying to bring out in my heart for you guys today, is just, um, you're never too small or insignificant for God to use you. And I hope that this YouTube channel will go on to help God save tons of people through this ministry that I'm trying to establish on YouTube because I feel like as a teenager I don't have a job at the moment and I don't have all that big huge fame and stuff like that so for right now I feel like that is my calling is since I have this platform and I really don't think that you need to have so much snappy like snazzy jazzy you know editing skills or in any editing software as long as you can post a video to YouTube to help tell others about God I think that's important God can use you in any way as long as you're open to that way God can use you so I hope that you're blessed by this story and encouraged to help me on um, maybe you know share these videos and if somebody doesn't know Jesus share this video with them and also share the other video I did yesterday but my testimony video because that has a little bit of part about salvation as well so um, please help share these videos and get the word out about my channel because I would love to bless lots of people through Christ on this channel so take care and God bless thanks for watching bye bye